Hi, I'm Linda Heldman with Canadian Beats. Today, I am speaking with Luke McMaster. Luke, say hi to everybody. Hey, everyone. How are you doing? <laughs> Alrighty. So, for some of you who don't recognize the name Luke McMaster, he was half of the uh, 90s boy band McMaster and James. Um, so, Luke, thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. Um, I have a list. I have some questions, and feel free to expand on as much as you want. Um, so, I guess my first question is: After being in the spotlight with McMaster and James, you took some time away to focus on your songwriting and producing. Can you tell us a bit about this phase of your life? Yeah, you know, it wasn't really a conscious choice to, to step away from from performing, and I, you know, I didn't necessarily completely ever step away from it because it's really part of my DNA, uh, getting on stage and, and playing my music. But I, McMaster and James um, had had run their course, and I had moved to Toronto, and I just I had all of the. I'm, I've always been a very very prolific songwriter. I have so many ideas, and I'm constantly you know jotting down lyrics, and no matter where I am, and I had had this backlog of all these songs. And so my publishers at Universal were like, well, can we put you in a room and get you writing with other, with other people and maybe pitch your songs for stuff? And um, some of my songs started to land with, with, with some really interesting artists and one artist of note that was a bit of a game changer and really drew me into producing and songwriting in a big way was uh, when, I, when I placed the song with Rihanna. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. That was that was a pretty um, pivotal point in my career, and and so yeah, it just kind of took on a life of its own, and I ended up spending a lot of time in Los Angeles and writing with Shelley Pikin, who uh, wrote all of Christina Aguilera's hits, and I, I I ended up writing a song for everyone from Nick Lachey to you know a lot of Canadian artists, a lot of you know Canadian Idol stuff, and and um, and had a, just a ton of fun doing it. And what was really interesting was that. At the same time, I was going to a lot of open mics. I was uh, still getting on stage and, and, you know, trying songs out and jamming with people. And, uh, and so many of uh, my friends and, and fans and stuff kept saying, Luke, like, you know, it's great that you're writing songs for other people, but when are you going to put up an album? When are you going to put out an album? And it just got to a point where I... Uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't resist it anymore, and uh, started working on a, on a solo record, and that led me to um, to recording All Roads, and, and so the journey continued. Cool, cool. Well, All Roads was released in 2013, so yeah, there was a bit of a span there when you were doing the writing and producing, and and yeah, yeah some of those names are really impressive. It's like wow, I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you know, it's a, a real highlight for me. I got to write a song with Randy Bachman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Love Randy. For, for one of the, uh, yeah, for one of the Idol projects. And, uh, you know, I'm such a fan of, uh, a student of songwriting even to this day and to be able to be in a room with Randy Bachman and ask him about how he came up with American Woman and these guys. <laughs> my, my head was just exploding. He is such a Canadian icon and respected yeah. by everybody in the music industry and, and fans all over. He's, Yeah. And he's such a nice guy, too. He's just such a, like, like, I was really nervous to ask him, like, he's heard it all before. He's probably been asked a million times, like, what, you know, how he wrote American Woman. But, so I asked him, and I said, I apologize. I don't know. You're probably sick of talking about this stuff. He's like, no, 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 I love it. I love, I, we're all learning. I'm still learning. I learned something from you today. And what do you want to know? Ask me anything. He's just, like, the nice guy. So mm -hmm. that was so cool. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And and I saw him in concert a couple of years ago in North Bay, and his concert is basically him storytelling about the songs, then performing the songs. And I love yeah. to hear the stories behind the songs. So do I. So do I. It, it just gives that song much more meaning in the long yeah. run. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Cool. Alrighty. Um. So let's see. We're talking about open roads. Um. 
and you basically <laughs> answer one of the questions I had there. Now, one of the singles uh, from Open Roads did amazingly well. Um, Good Morning Beautiful, which is a favorite of mine from, from that album. It climbed, the, uh, yeah. it climbed the Billboard Adult Contemporary Charts to number three and also stayed in the top 20 for 15 weeks. Um, now, this was a collaboration with someone who I'm a huge fan of, Jim Brickman. Again, he's another right. name that not a lot of people realize who he is and who he's worked with. He's worked with some phenomenal people, um, all genres of music, and, and I yeah. can't say enough in, about him. So how did your collaboration with him happen? Well, um, there's another guy that uh, is, I, would, I would consider him a songwriting mentor, uh, Mark Jordan, mm -hmm. who's another super talented Canadian songwriter who wrote uh, Rod Stewart's hit, Rhythm of My Heart, he's an amazing talent. And he, he and I uh, had been writing songs together for a couple of years, and he, he said to me one day, he's like, Luke, I know you're working on a solo album, and you need to meet Jim Brickman. And I was like, well, that'd be great. I know, I, know, I know who Jim Brickman is. Who doesn't know who Jim Brickman is? And he's like, well, he's a friend of mine, and I'll hook you up. And so he connected us, I think just through an email, and I sent Jim some of my music I was working on, Jim uh, said, hey, let's chat on the phone, and we got on the phone, and he, he said, you know, um, I'm going to be playing a concert in, um, in Erie, Pennsylvania, so not too far from Toronto, and why don't you come down, and we can, uh, we can kind of meet, uh, come backstage, and check out my show, so I was like, yeah, that, that would be amazing, so I, I got in my car, uh, I think he was there a couple weeks later, and drove to Erie, Pennsylvania, dead of winter. <laughs> not, not, the, not the funnest drive that I've, that I've taken, but um, there was some black ice along the way. But yeah, I, I met Jim, and it was so funny because, you know, he's a, he's a really, I mean, uh, this American piano player that, that's collaborated and, and affected the careers of a lot of different big-time big artists. And mm -hmm. he's, had more radio, he's had more radio play than on adult contemporary radio in the U.S. than Elvis Presley. Like he's, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's pretty impressive. So I was, a, I was a little nervous meeting him, and I'm like, you know, hey, Jen. You know, and he goes, Luke, let's, you know, enough, enough of the small talk. Let's write a song. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't, I'm, I'm writing a song with, like, the Jim Brickman. Oh, my God. So he's like, I've got this idea. All it is is a title right now. I think it'd be a great ballad. Um, I'm thinking, like, I love the title, Good Morning Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, yeah, I really like that. And we started working on... Um, it was a little really low, a really slow tempo, and we were talking about how how much you know, like uh, you know, we, we don't like mourning, and it got a little, it almost got a little negative. And I was like, you know, <laughs> I think we need to, well, I think we need to pick this thing up and give it more of like a almost like an acoustic reggae feel, mm -hmm. and, and and maybe we need to spin the lyrics so that yeah, we don't like mourning, but because of you, mourning is 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 amazing, and um, and. Uh, he loved it, and he actually went and did a sound check, and he came back, and I had kind of crapped it out a bit of the chorus and a little, and a totally different vibe for it. He's like, I love it, okay, and then he came up with the pre-chorus, and, and it just wrote itself from there. Awesome. And I, I remember driving back from Erie to Toronto, and my head was kind of spinning because I was like, I just think something really extraordinary just happened, but I, I, I haven't <laughs> processed it all in my head yet. And he actually texted me. He's like, Luke, I think, I think Good Morning Beautiful is a hit. I want to I wanna record it. Uh, and I want to help put, like, we should put it out together. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, like, you know, probably a year later, you know, after I recorded it for, for, for All Roads, uh, to be, like, thinking it's going to be a single on that record, uh, and Jim put it on his record, and he released it to radio, and he brought me on tour with them. I did over 100 dates across the U.S. with Jim over the course of two years, and, and we went to, like, hundreds of radio stations and media outlets and like Fox News and you know, you name it and um, and the song ended up going to going to top three on Billboard, which was just crazy. That's incredible. That's 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 an amazing story. Yeah. I, I actually caught you last February in Toronto at one of those Jim Brickman shows. That's oh. actually how I got reconnected with you. Great. And I we did that and I, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, we did talk that night, and I said, well, I definitely have to keep in touch. And, and I have been. You know, social media is wonderful. <laughs> it keeps us in touch with people. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's, that's great that you did. I'm glad you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I have to say that another one of my favorite songs from, from All Roads is Tuscan Skies. The first time I heard that was just like, ah. Oh. Yeah, Pablo's uh, guitar on that was just oh fabulous, fabulous. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. yeah well, that's another that's another friend and Canadian uh, iconic Canadian musician Pablo mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. Uh, that played on that, and, and that was a that was a dream come true as well. Wow, wow. Okay, well, why I have you here today is we're actually going to be talking about trending, which is yeah. your new CD release project. Um, now we have, uh, there's a big CD launch party planned for April 27th at the Revival in Toronto. Uh Um, but the album isn't actually released until the 29th? It's not officially released, but we will have copies there and it is available for Mm pre-order now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So folks can pre-order it. Uh, I did a pledge campaign, which has been really fun. And, uh... You can uh, go to uh, pledgemusic.com slash Luke McMaster, and you can not only pre-order an album, you can get VIP tickets to the show, or um, there's other packages as well. Um, you can even book my band to play at a house party. Uh, so that's kind of a limited offer, too, so if people want to check that out, <laughs> it's really fun. We come in, and you, someone has a party, and they, or, or, or just for, you, you could be having dinner, or... You could be having a hot tub with them. <laughs> set up and, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's so it's a really cool thing, and um, and and so you can access the album; it's, it's, it's ready to go almost. We're mm-hmm. just kind of putting the finishing touches on it, and there'll be copies available at the show as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, I hope I get yeah. one that night. I, I'm looking forward to you hearing will. it. You Definitely <laughs> looking forward to hearing it. Um, so, what does trending offer musically that your other CDs haven't? Well, you know, it's it's actually the songs themselves are 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 very true to to my influences, which is my influence is very much soul and Motown, uh, R and B. You know, my mm-hmm. favorite artists are Marvin Marvin Gaye and Al Green. Mm-hmm. You know, those are those, that's who I grew up listening to, and you wouldn't know it by looking at me. Nope, <laughs> uh, <laughs> nope. No. I'm, I'm a skin, skinny white guy from Brandon, <laughs> Manitoba, but. Uh, their soul uh, running through my veins, and and I, but but this this like and, and you hear that on all roads, you really hear that evidence, and there's a lot of really uh, cool covers that we did on all roads. Some of my favorite classic Motown songs, mm-hmm. just my my version of them. But with um, with trending, it's all original, and there's there's classic chord changes and rhythms and melodies. And, and lyrical content, like it's got that influence, but it's also got. We had a lot of fun in the studio using some some modern production as well, layered over to, over top of it. Um, there's a lot of you know energy in this album, and I'm just so excited for uh, for people to hear it. And I'm hoping anyone in the Toronto area or surrounding can come check it out because I'm just so proud of this album that I did with my band, and the fact that my band are like they're the most talented guys on the stage. Like they're just multi instrumentalists like they're playing guitar one minute they're playing piano the next minute they're DJing one minute they're playing bass the next wow it's just it's it's really a fun and um, dynamic show so hopefully people can, can, can come check it out absolutely well you're getting me excited about it just talking about it <laughs> and every time you <laughs> you you end up doing these periscope usually a Friday morning periscope uh, uh, video chat and you're playing music yeah. and stuff and and I love those I totally get into them I missed last Friday because I was road tripping um, so I'm disappointed I missed that but I've tried to catch as many as I can I think they're great well, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow woohoo all righty <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I'm, I'm, I'm really loving Periscope and the fact that anyone anywhere in the world can tune in every Friday at 10 30 a.m. Yeah. and I just sit there and have coffee and I, I just strum through some songs and it's just a beautiful I love it because it's just it's, I'd be kind of doing that anyway and it's like I get I get these like little messages from, from folks like you or someone in Africa and requests and it's amazing and I'm actually doing a rehearsal tomorrow afternoon and mm-hmm. I'm going to periscope from that as well I'll do a bonus periscope uh, oh cool from we'll be rehearsing for uh, for the CD release show so. 
Cool. Cool. Double, well, double periscope. There you go. There you go. Tomorrow <laughs> after. What am I doing tomorrow? Oh, I'm road tripping again. <laughs> <laughs> but 10 30 well, in the morning 10 30 10 30 in the morning i will be available so i, I should right. be able to tune in <laughs> well social media has become such a big part of of the music industry with with bands and record labels and and anyone related i mean it's a great it's a great tool to connect with the fans uh deliver n new music get feedback as to whether it's a hit or a miss um yeah. It's, it's something that, you know, 20 years ago we didn't have. So um, do you like this progression of, of social media? Yeah, you know, it's a double, it's, it's a love-hate thing, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Like, I, I, love, I love my and appreciate my fans, first and foremost. Like, I, anyone that's willing to, you know, make the effort, whether they're spending money or just making the effort to, to, to log into Periscope or come to one of our shows, like I deeply respect it, and I and, I, and it, it it allows me to do a career that I love doing, mm -hmm. you know. And, mm -hmm. and and not everyone can say that. So, but but at the same time, the only time I have an issue with it is, and and I actually wrote a song about it, and that song happens to be trending. Mm -hmm. Is when I feel like people get so so caught up in how many likes they're getting, and they get so obsessed with their phones. And, and, and they, they start to melt into and disappear. And you're, you're at dinner with your family or something, and everyone's on their phone. Oh, and that's frustrating. So, so <laughs> it just, it, trending is actually more about a relationship where you're with a girl who's feeling insecure and feels like she needs all these likes and validation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and trending just says, you, baby, you've got soul. You are the real deal. You don't need all those likes. You're trending with me. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so... You know, it's not like I'm not bashing social media because I'm I I need to be very active on social media and I'm really embracing it and I'm really I'm having fun with it. But when I sit down and have dinner with my family, the phones go away. We're not allowed to have our phones out. Or when when, when it's family time or friend time, you know, if I haven't seen my, my I'm going to be seeing, be seeing my little brother tonight, like, uh, and he's pretty addicted to his phone. Uh, no offense, but I'll, I'll be like, dude, you got to put the <laughs> phone down. Like, like let's let's let's, let's hang out here because. You know, it's like, it's like, it's like everyone has ADD now, and it's kind of scary because, you know, the world's a beautiful place, but you got to open your eyes once in a while and look around and not just experience it, experience yeah. it through your phone. Yeah, in, instead of yeah. a day where, where smokers would grab for a cigarette, now they grab their cell phones and they're, they're checking, yeah. oh, who texted me, who messaged me, who's doing this? So, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's, it's like, it's, you got to find anything... Anything, uh, my dad has a good saying, it's like um, everything in moderation including mm -hmm. moderation. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, and it's like, just moderate it. You can do it, but just like, you know, give yourself like specific times where you're really going to delve into that. If you're a recording artist or if you're in the media, it's just like, you know, dedicate those specific times and you'll be more focused. Your batteries will be more charged. You won't be just kind of, you know, randomly... Uh, filtering through it, you'll be there'll be more of a, a you know meaning behind it. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's my take on it. I mean, I don't have all the answers, but I, <laughs> I just you ask me the question and you got a much. Longer there you go. Time. No, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. No, I find that that I hit points where I have social media overload, and it's just like okay. The phone's going off today. You know, there's nothing yeah. that important that can't wait till the next day. Yeah, exactly. So. I, I just I just think that's why you know that's one of the things that's why I was gonna you know. Uh, talk a little bit about trending and that's what inspired the song it was hmm. literally that it was just like look and I'll, and I even say it I always say it in my shows I'll be like you know what we're all kind of uh, caught up and in, in addicted to our phones myself included but it's nice to be here with you guys live in person mm -hmm. we're, mm -hmm. we're here we're present we're going to be playing music for you this isn't a recording and thanks for coming you know that's kind of my opening speech because hmm. I just want to remind people it's like and by the way I also it's funny because the irony is that I followed up by saying, "Hey, make sure to tweet me outside <laughs> and like take, take lots of pictures and you know, like." But as long as they're not like holding the phones the whole time, and, you know, I, I don't have a problem. So. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good, good. Um, it, we should mention that trending is a totally independent project for you. Um, yeah. Uh, which yeah, factor supported, but, but mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. independently released. Yeah, and and I know that it's not e an easy task uh, by a financial viewpoint to uh, 
to make this happen. So you have mentioned pledge music uh, to help with with certain funding for it. Um, now I yeah. know I notice on on the pledge music page there's also a charitable aspect to that. Uh, there is, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're partnering with Cam H, and part of the proceeds uh, of, of the show uh, go towards uh, towards the Center for Addiction and Mental Health. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually have two brothers that are uh, psychiatrists at Cam H, oh. and have uh, you know experienced challenges with uh, you know people within my family and friends and stuff that. And we've all had challenges with, with you know, uh, mental health. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and it's very rare that you meet a few person that's a hundred percent mental health, like mentally health. You know, everything's perfect. You know, but it's like it's 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 a lot about kind of raising stigma and judgment, and um, you know, making sure that people realize that even if someone has these problems or these issues, you know. They're still people, and uh, so we're just trying to we're trying to, to partner with them and and you know shine a bit of light on that, and maybe raise a little bit of money towards that because it's really a it's a huge issue and it's, it's something that gets swept under the rug a little mm-hmm. bit. And uh, I talk to my brothers a lot about that, and and so yeah, we're we're excited to be partnering with them, and and uh, hopefully lots of people come out and support that cause as well. Great, great. Well, it's it's a good charity, and definitely. Bringing awareness is 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 so beneficial, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So, uh, with with trending, do you have a first single picked from the album? We do. Uh, we do have a single picked, and uh, it's kind of a secret, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a bit of a secret. I, I can't. I I, I can't um, reveal that quite yet. Very soon. Okay. We're doing something really cool with it, and and, and we'll uh, we'll fill you in. You'll be the first uh, that I. Ah, uh, will we know on the twenty seventh? Um, possibly, possibly. But but one thing I can tell you is that I do have a song that that's that's coming out to radio. Um, Sony Canada is putting it out. Uh, it's a song called New York City that mm-hmm. ha- is uh, a remix of one of, of an older song of mine, but a. Uh, uh, Incredibly talented DJ from Sweden did a did a, a remix for it, and um, so they, hopefully you guys are going to start hearing that on on radio. It's a really fun song, uh, basically about hopping on a flight to New York City and uh, and uh, you know looking for a, for a lost love. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a and it's, it's got a great beat, and I'm really excited for people to kind of start hearing that on the radio. We'll, we'll be playing it at the on the 27th. Well, okay, and there's a video out for that one actually right now that you can view online. There is, yeah. Just if you if you look up with John John Dahlback and Luke Master of New York City, uh, it's a really cool video too. We shot it in Manhattan, and it's this really fun, cute mm-hmm. story um, about a, a a guy that's uh, he. Well, it's actually about a mini Statue of Liberty, a male version that's looking for his lost love, who's the actual Statue of Liberty, and he's going through Manhattan. And everyone thinks he's kind of crazy, and they're like, they think he's a street performer. And he's like, I need to find my way. He's trying to find his way to the statue, and uh, and it's just following him on that journey. And in, in, in between, I'm, I'm doing some performance shots and jumping around, and it's, it's, I, I'm really proud of this video. It's really mm-hmm. fun. It, it's a really good video. A lot of fun yeah. to watch, yeah. definitely. It's not a typical video. It's not a typical, like, hey, we're in the club jumping around. It's more of a feel good there's something about it that just pulls us at hard strings for some reason mm-hmm. so definitely mm-hmm. definitely check it out yep absolutely absolutely okay well you're not going to tell us what the single is uh do you have any collaborations that you'd like to talk about on the cd yeah you know i, I collaborated with um uh, a, gr- a girl that's a, a huge talent that a lot of people may have heard of already uh stacy k mm-hmm. and she um incredible singer songwriter, rapper, uh, she sings with a, a group called A440, uh, in a, it's an acapella group, and she's on a song called uh, Hurt So Good, uh, and it's a duet with her, and uh, it's kind of a, it's a bit of a Fifty Shades of Grey type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, definitely uh, check that one out. Um, and uh, that was that was like 
there was a couple other collaborations, but mainly um, like with other songwriters. Like I wrote a couple of songs with a guy named Christopher Ward, who's oh, uh, there's a name I haven't heard in a while. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> an amazing lyricist. He wrote a song called Black Velvet for Atlanta Miles. Mm -hmm. uh, one of one of my favorite songs. And, uh, mm -hmm. So that was really fun, and uh, and yeah, a lot of it's really personal. It's really like um, I, I I do a lot of writing with a guy in my, uh, the guys in my band. And, and uh, a guy named Aaron Chatterbaity, who's my keyboard player. He plays electric guitar. He sings backups. And so even when we're on the road, uh, we're always writing. And these are these are pretty pretty uh, songs that are really true to us. And we, we really hold up in the studio and and, uh, and kind of crafted this record. So awesome, awesome. Um, okay, do you have a particular favorite song on this CD? Yeah, I I, I have a couple. Um, I really love a song called. Called Ain't Going Nowhere, mm -hmm. and um, it's like you can almost perform this with like a church choir in the chorus. It's like it's really, um, it's a ballad, but it's just there's something very um, anthemic about it, and calming about it, and all these different things at the same time. So that I think that's probably my favorite, my mm -hmm. favorite on the album. But I love trending. Um, I love the single that's coming out that I can't tell you <laughs> what it is. <laughs> talk about like talk about anticipation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you'll you'll understand when you when you okay. Hear it, okay. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, I read somewhere in my research that uh, this one, um, every single song is like one of your babies, and I totally understand that. I have dabbled in songwriting. I totally get that because you do you 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 give them life and you nurture them and and the whole process so that when you put an album together it's it is it's like 10 or 12 of your babies being put out there so it's it's yeah. it's a cool experience yeah it, it is it is and and it's again it's kind of another one of those double-edged swords where it's, it can be very nerve-wracking to to reveal it because mm -hmm. you've you, you get very attached to it, and, and they, that, that's like, you know, they are like your babies. Like you, you, where you're wearing your heart really on your sleeve when you're when you're first playing these for, for people. But um, but it's it's really it's really satisfying to record an album and not just have it sit on the shelf to, to get out there and tour with it and do a do a CD release show and, and share this. Music. Like the whole point of making music, I think, is to really share it. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm shared process so so yeah that's uh yeah i remember saying that and it's very true cool cool well is there anything else you'd like to add to what we've talked about today no i think i ran a lot <laughs> more than enough <laughs> well i've loved the conversation and it's made me even more excited to hear trending uh when it comes out and uh, to hear uh hear it at the the cd release party again that's april 27th at the revival in toronto now canadian beats will be uh doing a contest to give away a couple of pairs yeah. of tickets um we're still working out details on how we're going to do that but definitely if you're in the toronto area or can get to the toronto area on april the 27th uh by all means enter this contest when we put it out and try and win yourself so it's a way in to to get a live uh, aspect to to trending because it's going to be an incredible yeah. album, definitely. Yeah, exactly. And what we'll do too is we'll give away a couple of CDs. So we'll, we'll run a contest with you guys, and like you said, we'll figure out the details so we can uh, supply a few different people uh, with tickets, and and then a few of those people will also get a, a grand prize where they'll get a CD as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank yeah. you so much, yeah. Luke. I appreciate it. And I thank you I for joining you. me today uh, to, to talk about trending and a little bit about your history, what you've been up to. Uh, all right. Well, thank you so much, Luke McMaster, yeah, we've been chatting with. And again, I'm Linda Heldman with Canadian Beats. Thanks so much.